Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Mohammed Yusuf. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree Law 35 of 2022, amending Article 3 of Decree Law 27 of 2002 on the establishment of the Constitutional Court based on the proposal of Prime Minister and the opinion of the General Assembly of the Constitution. Constitutional Court, as well as the approval of the Cabinet. According to the Decree Law, Article 3 of Decree Law 27 of 2002 shall be amended as follows. The Court shall be comprised a President, a Vice President, and five members who are appointed as per a royal order for a five-year term that can be renewed for other similar terms. Whenever the President is absent or unable to discharge the powers of their duty, the Vice President shall replace them and shall have the same prerogative prescribed for the President. If the position of the president, vice president, or any member of the court becomes vacant due to resignation, death, health disability, or any other reason, another one shall be appointed as per a royal order to replace them for a five-year term that can be renewed for other similar terms. His Majesty the King also issued Decree Law 36 of 2022 ratifying the Framework Agreement and the Agency and Guarantee Agreement signed between the Government of Bahrain and the Islamic Development Bank to finance the second phase of the water transmission and storage development project from a Dura plant based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and after the approval of the Cabinet. The agreements were signed on July 4, 2022. His Majesty the King issued Decree Law 37 of 2022 ratifying the loan and guarantee agreement signed between the Government of Bahrain and the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development to finance the project in developing water transmission networks associated with the second phase of a dual power and water plant based on the proposal of the Prime Minister and after the approval of the Cabinet. The agreements were signed on July 7, 2022. Her Highness, the mother of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness, Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the headquarters of the Product of Bahrain Project in Rafah, which is considered one of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation's most important development projects. Her Highness praised the royal support of His Majesty the King to orphans and widows affiliated with the RHF. She also praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the RHF and the distinguished management of His Highness Sheikh Nasser of the Foundation. She praised the project and its high distinguished level which works on manufacturing pioneering Bahraini cadres in the field of production, develop their skills and provide them with job opportunities. Her Highness was briefed on the sections of the project and the production mechanism and she stressed her continued support for Bahraini widows and orphans. The RHF Secretary General Dr. Mustafa Sayed expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Highness for inaugurating the headquarters of the project. He also noted that the project is one of the strategic projects that comes within the directives of His Majesty the King to provide a decent life for all RHF beneficiaries. The Speaker of the Representatives Council affirmed that Bahrain is an oasis of security, stability, harmony and peaceful coexistence thanks to the humanitarian approach of His Majesty the King. She praised the speech of the Minister of Interior that he delivered during his meetings with heads of majlises. She held a 30% drop in crime rate in the Kingdom and added that this marks an achievement for the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She added that the efforts of the Ministry of Interior contributed to maintaining the security and stability in the Kingdom. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that Bahrain is an oasis of security, stability, harmony and peaceful coexistence thanks to the humanitarian approach of His Majesty the King. He praised the speech of the Minister of Interior that he delivered during his meetings with heads of majlises. He held the 30% drop in crime rate in the kingdom and added that this marks an achievement for the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the efforts of the Ministry of Interior contributed to maintaining the security and stability of the kingdom. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain enjoys an atmosphere of harmony, brotherhood and tranquility thanks to the wise visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. More on this report. Thanks to the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and thanks to the government's remarkable approach led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the nation's march is moving forward with the support and backing of the people of Bahrain, achieving a positive outcome and a brighter future. The security achievement made by Bahrain police announced by the Minister of Interior during the community meeting was evidence that Bahrain is indeed living through the era of achievements. 
The decrease in the overall crime rate reached 30%, which is evidence of the security and stability experienced by Bahrain based on the societal partnership that made security the responsibility of everyone. This comes at a time when Bahrain is preparing for the constitutional entitlement represented by holding the 2020 elections. Security remains the basis of development, and community partnership remains the basis for building a better future. The Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan, affirmed that the economic recovery plan launched by the government contributed to the growth of job creation in the labor markets and the rise in employment rates by the end of the third quarter of this year. 21,560 citizens were employed, which constitutes 107.8% of the total number targeted to be employed annually until 2024. The minister stated that the implementation of the National Plan for the Labor Market 2021-2023 is proceeding according to plan to achieve its goals, in addition to creating qualitative opportunities for citizens to make them the first choice when hiring. With regard to training, the minister stated that the total number of trainees from the beginning of the year until September 27th reached 7,615, a 76% of the targeted number to be trained annually until 2024. He stressed that the ministry is cooperating with Temkin, will work to strengthen training mechanisms and programs to be more related to the needs of the labor market. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, met in Tokyo with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Japan, Yoshimasa Hayashi. The two sides highlighted the strong relations between Bahrain and Japan and discussed means to further develop the bilateral cooperation in various fields. They also exchanged views on a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, met in Tokyo with the Minister for Digital Transformation of Japan, Kono Taro. The two sides discussed cooperation between Bahrain and Japan in communication, information technology, innovation and digital transformation, and making optimal use of them to improve and develop government services and support sustainable development goals. The second edition of the National Health Regulatory Authority Conference was launched under the patronage of the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, organized by the National Health Regulatory Authority. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, stressed the importance of organizing and hosting medical and health conferences in Bahrain and exchanging experiences with specialists and stakeholders in this sector, which contributes to enhancing and enriching medical capabilities and knowledge and enhances the effectiveness and sustainability of the health system. This conference aims to enhance communication between all health practitioners and those interested in providing health care services and medical products with high quality and efficiency. In the first official participation at the level of British parties since the Dean of the Arab Diplomatic Corps in London assumed his duties, Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, hosted the reception of the Arab Ambassadors Council for members of the British Labour Party in Liverpool on the sidelines of the party's annual conference. The president of the Labour Party, Sir Keir Starmer, delivered a speech welcoming the participants and stressed the importance of the relations of Arab countries with the Labour Party. He extended his thanks to the Secretary General of the Arab League, Ahmed Abul Ghait, and Sheikh Fawaz was for the invitation and the participation in the conference. Sheikh Fawaz also delivered a speech in which he highlighted the depth of relations between the UK and the Arab countries, stressing the importance of consolidating the strengthening Arab-British relations and creating appropriate opportunities for partnership and sustainable development. The Shadow Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs, David Lamy, delivered a speech in which he outlined the common aspects of cooperation that the Labour Party seeks to develop with the Arab countries. The Secretary General of the Arab League delivered a recorded speech in which he expressed condolences to the UK on the demise of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and stressed the depth of Arab-British relations and the importance of cooperation to face global challenges and develop economic and trade relations. The Minister of Tourism, Fatma Sayrafi, met with the Minister of Tourism of Saudi Arabia, Ahmed Al Khatib, on the sidelines of her participation in the World Tourism Day held in Indonesia. She underlined the commitment to continue the integrative efforts between the two kingdoms in the tourism sector, which plays a key role in increasing the contribution of this sector to the national economies of both kingdoms. The Minister also discussed ways to strengthen tourism cooperation and partnerships, as well as exchange experiences. They also discussed cooperation in organizing joint activities in both kingdoms. 
The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain Society participated in the 77th session of the UN General Assembly in New York, and the center witnessed the signing of several agreements. More in this report. Bahrain has always exerted great efforts in consolidating and building on the principles of peaceful coexistence as one of the most outstanding outcomes of the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Since its early days thousands of years ago until present time, Bahrain has welcomed all religions, sects and cultures, making it an ideal destination for all those seeking peaceful coexistence, mutual acceptance and freedom of religion. This meeting was very important just to stress the importance of the education. If we want a better world, if we want a world of peace, a world of understanding between uh, among different uh, uh, religions, ethnic groups, neighborhoods and so on, we have to stress the importance of the education. Bahrain is, uh, is going in the right direction, uh, uh, trying just to form the young generation and the future generation, which are the hope of the world. We've heard from the King Hamad Center for Peaceful Coexistence about the impressive work that they have been doing so far. We've learned from students who have gone through training programs. We've learned from trainers who have engaged in the trainings. And I think it is a very practical way of translating uh, the normative frameworks and philosophies we have about peace and dialogue. His Majesty the King always said ignorance is the first enemy of peace, so it is our duty to learn, share and live together by the tenets of faith within a spirit of mutual respect and love. With such wise and inspiring words, His Majesty the King drew Bahrain's approach to peaceful coexistence, dialogue and openness on the world with its religions, sects and cultures without any discrimination. King Hamad gave us the, the declaration and this uh, was uh, a first step uh, in a millenary story in which uh, Bahrain uh, has been always supporting uh, peaceful coexistence. Uh, from the time of Dilmun, uh, we have uh, uh, experience uh, and uh, news uh, and documents about uh, uh, Bahrain as a peaceful uh, country. It's a marriage of education and peace. We are living in a very turbulent world and anything we can do especially to this kind of dialogue with interfaith dialogue and the type of education we hope to do together, that will contribute to make our world more peaceful. And that itself is a very noble uh, objective and I hope we can implement it very quickly. Bahrain took the initiative to accommodate all people and their faiths and has been a leader in hosting the first mosques, churches and temples. Bahrain condemned the Iranian artillery and missile attacks on several areas in the Kurdistan region in Iraq. The attacks resulted in a number of deaths and injuries, as well as material losses and destruction of infrastructure. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed its utmost condolences and sympathy to the government, the Iraqi people and the families of the victims, and wished a speedy recovery to all the injured. It affirmed its full solidarity with Iraq and its support for efforts to preserve its security, stability, unity and territorial integrity and rejection of any attack of its sovereignty or a threat to the safety of its people.